Hello my friends, welcome to the metal shop. This is just a narration of uh, vid videos of a 1966 Ford Thunderbird that I restored. So these pictures that you see now, that's the car that started it all. That was my grandfather's uh, town Landau Coupe that he inherited in about 1980. Pretty frugal man, he never would have bought such a nice car for himself. He was more of a Toyota Camry type of guy or even a Corolla. But you can see these, there's some pictures of him uh, in his house in Cape Cod uh, when he inherited this car from his uncle who bought it brand new in 1966. Uh, vintage burgundy with a vintage burgundy interior, absolutely loaded. I, I loved that car. And so I set out uh, to get one of my own one day and try and uh, recreate, recapture uh, the feeling I had when I was a kid. So I found this one on Craigslist. Also a town uh, Landau Coupe. And these are the actual pictures from the Craigslist ad. Guy could have probably asked for a lot more money if he took better pictures and put the hubcaps on, etc. But you can see that this car was uh, completely loaded. Um, leather interior. This car had a 428. Uh, cruise control. Um, basically, um, every conceivable option was checked for this car other than convertible. Convertible was an option. But he got absolutely everything. I mean, you name it. The, the four-speaker stereo, uh, both power seats, um, the headrest so that your passenger could take a nap. Um, so you see the interior. And it, the interior was mint. Just mint condition. Parchment leather interior. The body was uh, reasonably good. Uh, Wimbledon white with a, uh, a buckskin uh, Landau top that they called that color. Um, and the top was in absolutely perfect condition. A little bit of surface rust that you can see there in the quarters. Uh, had a little bit of Bondo there that was starting to crack in, in those uh, rear quarter panels. But look at that top. You can tell the original tops because the seams were right on the outside there. They're, the old vinyl, you get it 42 inches wide. You can easily spot a replacement top because they only make 36 inch vinyl now and the seams are inboard you know, the four or five inches on either side, but this top was mint. I'd intended to um, to remove the top and, you know, so I'd go with a, you know, a regular hard top, but it was just in such perfect condition. Uh, there's the original top. There's no rust underneath it bubbling up, no nothing that I just opted to uh, leave it intact. I, I really had no choice, so I changed my plans to change the color of the car so that I could use that perfect buckskin top. Uh, no key for the trunk it was included in the sale. I can't remember what I paid for this car. This was a few years ago now. I think I paid uh, $3,000 for it. Some pictures of the engine. Uh, that big 428. Again, that was an option. Air conditioning. I, this car, again, it had totally everything. I and mean, you can see some replacement uh, heater hoses in there and a parts store battery and you know some wiring. Kind of a mess. An aftermarket coil mounted there on top of the air conditioning compressor etc that you know some surface rust in the engine compartment was you know filthy I ended up finding uh, once I broke into the engine that it had uh, four bent push rods um, the guy I bought it from had tried to run some ancient fuel through it I think he put some fuel conditioner and a couple of gallons of high test and tried to run it and it probably ran fine but that old fuel you know turned to varnish and gum and it completely glued those uh, four valves shut so I had to uh, address that uh, the four bent push rods was one of the first uh, things that I had to uh, fix on the car so yeah love those wraparound seats it's like kind of like sitting in your living room there in the back so there's the rear seat removed and you can see the broadcast sheet there where it was stuck between the springs absolutely perfect condition perfectly preserved. I mean some mice had built nests in here and it smelled pretty bad but they didn't eat this sheet. You can see that I love the handwritten leather notes and a couple of circles there and obviously in a woman's handwriting. This this was really cool. I put it back where I found it albeit in a Ziploc uh, plastic bag. There's the original uh, tag on the intake manifold stating that this was a 428 engine. Really no way to tell from the exterior of the engine the differences between the 428 and the uh, 390. And there is the uh, the data tag from inside the door panel that has the VIN, Q code VIN for the again for the 428 and it has like the paint code for the Wimbledon white and uh, for the town Landau roof and 
so on and so forth there. Original air cleaner, the logo, the uh, you know the decal, 428 decal, checkerboard racing flags, you know, still still perfectly intact. Um, you know, need to be restored. Here's the car in my garage. It's got some fender, didn't come with fender skirts, got some fender skirts for it. And you can see that I've got some kind of dub style, larger 17 inch wheels on there, just, just for rollers. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna end up running those wheels or not. But uh, in order to facilitate those wheels, I did have to go with some bigger ARP studs. These studs are roughly $10 a piece. Uh, from ARP, they're for the Mustang guys. That's why, but they fit the uh, Thunderbirds, of course. If you ever have problems finding Thunderbird parts, check the Mustang crossover parts. So they are the factory the original studs versus the longer um, Mustang studs there. And there's just tapping out the uh, the factory studs. I had to uh, use the Dremel tool there just to in the backing plate. I just had to kind of grind a little. Just a little relief there just so I could get those studs to pass through there and put the new ones in. Kind of funny. They would not come without that little relief ground into there. A little bit of lithium grease on there. And I used a rechargeable impact and some washers and a nut just to just to drive those on instead of you know taking the brakes off and putting it on a press. There's another one. And I did have to use a, uh, a small spacer here in the next pick. Again, I was never going to run these wheels. I just had them. I had the tires from a, from a, these were actually, believe it or not, they were on a Honda, but they were, you know, the regular 5 by 114.3 bolt pattern. Okay, stripped out the carpets, and here you can see that kind of, that paper asphalt kind of mastic that Ford put down for uh, sound deadening. Absolutely perfect condition. And you'll start to see all of the uh, remnants from the assembly line, tons of screws, and rivet tails and little plastic caps all of this stuff was original to the car i'm convinced that the original carpets had never been out and this stuff was just it's amazing like a little a time capsule automotive archaeology of all these things that were just left there on the floor as this car went down uh, the assembly line I, I i found this so cool i you know i grabbed all this stuff up and you know kind of detailed everything but look at that mastic that sound deadening that's glued to the floor absolutely perfect condition these cars all came undercoated uh, from the factory with, you know, some sort of paint type of really thick, like a bed liner, gummy kind of adhesive on the bottom of the cars that kept these the floors. They were just perfect, absolutely perfect. You'll see some more. You'll see more screws, screws, screws everywhere. And this next shot is uh, just basically absolutely everything that I found there. And those were all original to this car from the from the assembly line. I'm 100% convinced of that. So they just left it. They just left all this, this junk in the car. And uh, I'm sure the bean counters from Ford would never allow that today. Oh, don't forget the uh, the change. I think I made uh, about a buck and a half there towards the uh, restoration project. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, let's see. So this next pick is the, uh, the original uh, hood insulation stripped off and ah, lo and behold what do we have here found another run sheet uh, from a completely different Thunderbird I've heard guys talking about finding uh, Lincoln um, run sheets under there because they were built on the same line as the Thunderbirds there's a witness mark from the adhesive on the underside of the hood um, so I decided to do a color change as I said before I was gonna make use of that buckskin top so what I did was I really liked the special Landau's pictured here that were available in 1965. Um, you couldn't get them in 1966 with the blind quarter windows, but you could still you could order the car with all you could option it the same way. It just wasn't a special Landau package from Ford. So I decided to go in that direction with the Ember Glow um, paint, when the uh, parchment interior with the Ember Glow accents, and the parchment or the buckskin uh, Landau top. So there's. Uh, masking off the engine bay painting that I bought all uh, paint from Express Paints which will match the Ford uh, factory any factory OEM color so I just uh, you know pulled back all the wiring and then masked off the engine bay and and painted down there with the Express Paint and clear coat it comes out reasonably well considering that you're talking about a rattle can 
job um, without you know proper hardeners. And there's the underside of the hood. Obviously, I saved some paint. It was kind of expensive. Where the uh, hood insulation was going to glue to the underside of the hood, I just left it uh, left it white. No need to uh, waste all the extra paint there. Those are the original wheels, cleaned up, painted uh, with some white walls to uh, go on the car. I said about uh, dyeing the interior. There's that cove in the dash, that kind of that jet airliner inspired dash. Prep is everything here. Clean, 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 and use uh, your adhesion promoter and a good quality dye, and it will adhere. That's what uh, the factory did when they changed colors. They only made so many different colors and parts, and you could get literally, you know, there's 10 different colors of interiors in those days. I colored the, uh, I covered the uh, dial numbers there, the speedometer numbers, with uh, Vaseline on a Q-tip so that when I painted them, I just could rub the paint right off and they stayed silver. I know some guys have, uh, some guys use silver paint on like a rubber stamp and went over after they painted and restored their speedometer numbers. Cool speedometer, you know, goes from side to side like that. Just the trigger gun and the protective uh, mask there that I used. Uh, some engine parts. Um, old Ford Blue was the Duplicolor engine enamel that I found that matched a, an exact perfect match. So see the air cleaner and the valve covers and that uh, that radiator. It's not the over, really an overflow tank. It's really just the the, the radiator fill tank there. Uh, they came out very valve covers came out very well. The air cleaner you know reasonably well. Um, there's there a good amount of rust that I just removed by hand and, and prepped and painted that with uh, you know really good uh, primer and then again that old Ford blue I think that tank ended up leaking it had been repaired it had been brazed before so well, so be it a couple of uh, side skirts I bought a pair really cheap and then I ended up finding another one that had the uh, the stainless steel trim so I ended up you know obviously I used the one with the nice stainless trim on the car uh, oh yeah, the turn signals, the sequential turn signals, mine didn't work, and rather than restore that old, the motors and the screw pla screw type plastic and the points and everything, I bought a, one of those solid state electronic units, and there it is pictured there, just plug and play, it plugs in place of, uh, of the original unit, um, worth every penny, an expensive unit, um, I think $220 or something like that, stuff that right there in place of the original one, I just... I covered it with uh, adhesive, um, sticker adhesive, foam adhesive. There's the original trunk liners that I removed. They were reason. They were okay. You know, they needed. And there's the some pictures of the trunk. I used some bed liner where it was going to be covered and obviously painted, cut in where you were going to see it. Came out really well. It did. It really came out well. It just you know took my time and did a little bit, a little you know, and did the engine and did the trunk. There's the trunk lid. Just how beautiful that it was with a clear on there look how nice that came out and there's the trunk after the new uh, the new boards the new liner was uh, glued in place you can see the spray adhesive you need a roller for that you know a nice wooden like a wallpaper roller or something like that you can see the uh, spare tire subwoofer in these picks there that's uh, part of my hidden audio system I was starting to work on that's just regular household craft paper insulation in the, the rear quarters in the rear seat. Ford had this stuff full of insulation that the mice ate unfortunately but the, this was a really luxury car and they really wanted it to be quiet inside and they took a ton of efforts to you know to keep these cars luxurious and, and quiet in their interior. Um, there's the rear package tray. I swapped out the stock one for the one that had the stereo, the console, the the speaker between the seats. There's the overhead console that I painted accent color and ember glow. Wouldn't have come that way. Um, it would have been a parchment. It would have matched. And there's the cove with the molding and the Thunderbird logo reapplied. Uh, speaker grills and seat belts that all had to be dyed um, to match. And there's the new carpets. They come in two sections, which is handy. You don't have to remove the center console. Pretty sweet. Took the seats apart and painted those rear shells you know again the ember glow to match there's some more of the seats and the the plastic risers on the bottom all this stuff was in excellent condition just needed to be prepped and dyed uh, there's an air cleaner an old uh, Shelby style air cleaner that I was wavering whether I was going to use that or not um, 
you can see the intake manifold underneath that so there's the there's the boat anchor all cleaned up and, and restored in that old Ford Blue Oish, that thing weighed a ton cutting in the doors and the door frames and the ember glow and this is a home restoration project I mean I'm using newspapers and plastic and you know this is going to be a driver driver quality restoration Some more cutting in in the door door frames again I took my time just in these little projects you know taping everything off removing weather stripping etc and it all came out very well if you wouldn't have known that this wasn't a factory ember glow car without really really seriously tearing it down and there is the uh, rear drum I just cleaned up the, the rust and, and painted that with a rust inhibiting paint um, in good shape again the rear end also in excellent shape cleaned some surface rust and painted that um, here's the stereo I was going to use this is actually a marine unit it's just a really just a power amp that accepts uh, USB input so you can run you know an iPod or any type of you know USB storage device um, for a stereo so no radio no CD nothing like that so I m mounted that completely hidden up under the dash I wanted everything to be, I wanted it to appear stock with the AM 8-track radio. So there's some speakers hidden in, up in the rear tray. I, you know, I added as many extra speakers as possible. Um, but I wanted this audio completely hidden. You were not going to see it. That's the wiring harness for that uh, spare tire subwoofer. And again, like I said, I added the, uh, the speaker in the center there in the package tray. This originally came with like a really neat reverb unit from the factory. Um, you'll, you can see the bird there it mounted in the center of the speaker. Again, this would have been parchment colored. I dyed it to ember glow just as an accent piece. That's the original um, package shelf without the speaker. And there's the speaker. One of the speaker grill. Hard to match the parchment uh, paint as well. NPD, National Parts Depot, ended up having the right one. There's the speaker from behind mounted in place. And there's a, an iPod. So I, I ran the uh, input into the uh, center console a little glove box there so you could hide the uh, hide the iPod in there see it's white that's because this was for marine applications I mean you can it's it was marine specs you could obviously you could run it in anything but it would stand up to the harsh environment of a marine on a boat and so on there it is from the that bucket that little glove box plastic bucket from the outside and there's some extra parts in there the original manual etc and this is the uh, this is the seal between the blower motor and kind of the, the heater core they were plastic they were rubber and they would just disintegrate I fixed it with some the kind of the tape there the, the rescue tape worked great there's a spare tire install and spare tire cover in the trunk original spare red line spare had never been used there's the uh, hidden subwoofer in that uh, in that spare tire well I mounted a tachometer these didn't come with a tack I used, I mounted it with velcro I didn't drill any holes so this could have easily been returned to stock I fabricated a a, a plug from an old trailer harness so you could unplug it just some uh, reflective insulation it kind of matched it had uh, fiberglass reflective insulation from the factory I used I saved what the mice didn't destroy just to use as a template and uh, put it underneath the rear seats again keeping this car quiet extra jute uh, mat underneath the carpets what they include for jute backing on the replacement carpets is shameful compared to what they came from from the factory so I you know I really used a lot more these are the front uh, kick panels that little square is what the mice left those panels used to be covered with jute backing like I did there but that's all that was left on either side the mice really they really did a number in this car I had to replace the carpets I mean there's literally a waterfall of mouse urine from the uh, nest that they made on either side of the rear seats underneath the, the rear seat bottoms uh, some seat belts installed I again I installed a, a seat another seat belt in the center the idea was so I could uh, take the whole family I have uh, five of us there so I could we could all five of us could pack in the car and uh, have seat belts so I added that center seat belt I'm not riding in the middle I'm not riding in the hump there's that third row seat again that was a Mustang part uh, matched you know perfectly 
And there's the carpets installed. That was that was kind of a fun job. I mean, it's not not too bad. Just you know, keep cutting back, keep cutting back. Make sure you're not uh, not too short. That's a picture of the seats. The seat getting seats going back in. Underside of the hood with the uh, insulation installed. That really finishes it off nice. This is the door panels. They got a little bit of water damage, and it's really just kind of a pressed chipboard, a heavy-duty cardboard wood fiber board. I was going to fiberglass the bottom of the boards there, and I, the resin ended up actually soaking into the the chipboard, the fiber there, and it, it fixed it without really adding the fiberglass. So kind of a neat, uh, happy accident that happened there. And the original splash shields I reused, and the the stick them, the gum with there was still good. There's the panels. I added the ember glow carpeting to the bottom. Um, I'd have a professional do that if I had to do that again. Special Landau emblems from the 1965 that I added to the door panels, also on the uh, out, outer rear quarters. That's the uh, brake master cylinder, which I had to replace. Just buy a new one. I ended up buying a new one. I tried a couple of rebuild kits. They didn't fit. Didn't work. Save your, I think it was $65 for a replacement master cylinder. Just save yourself the headache and just buy a uh, replacement master cylinder. Oh, the uh, that's the coil. Uh, I was prepping to paint the coil so yellow, so it'd be the you know would match the factory mustard top. They called it uh, coil. That came out very well. I think I was painting some speaker screws there too. There's the master cylinder with the uh, replacement cap and a re reproduction decal, and that is the uh, I gravity bled the brakes since I was by myself. Um, oh yeah, I had a jack stand that bit the dust. Thankfully I was lifting up the front corner and that thing gave up the ghost. Uh, it's much too heavy of a car to use these cheap, you know, stamped steel jack stands. Shame on me for doing that. I did have the tires under the car and some other safety devices in place, obviously for jack stands, so I wasn't in any danger. But this was what I rigged up, kind of like a crank, winch, hand winch crank to uh, put the... Uh, intake manifold in place. It really has to be dropped center onto the car in one shot. You know, you've got the gaskets, you have adhesive, there's a small section of uh, radiator hose that has to be put on. Uh, two guys could do it, but it, it really, uh, uh, and they use an engine lift is really the best way to do it. I didn't have an engine lift or access to one, so I rigged this thing up with a, uh, you know, like an eye bolt in my ceiling and that crank and uh, dropped it in place, worked slicker than heck. Uh, the gasket, I, that was the wrong intake gasket. It was missing it was missing a port, a coolant port. I don't know why I took so many pictures of this, why I was so fascinated that I got the wrong one. I cut out the missing port and then just ended up, you know, getting the proper gasket that, that fit. Um, so yeah, that intake manifold weighs it weighs over 100 pounds, and it's a big car. You're not going to reach in and put it on there. Two guys, I suppose, could, but there's really nothing to hold on to. Again, an engine hoist or you know, an overhead uh, crank like I did. So there it is installed. I had the uh, carburetor rebuilt uh, by a friend of mine who's, a, who's really good at stuff like that. Um, don't do that unless you're, you have experience rebuilding a carburetor. Far too many small moving parts. Stock sway bar, I replaced it with a heavy-duty aftermarket sway bar. Um, oh, this picture, that's the red oxide primer from when I removed the sway bar mount. That's just cool. It's just how clean and nice this car was. Engine compartment, I have the overflow tank or the fill tank installed. You can see this thing's really starting to take shape here. Uh, it's the gas lines, the distributor installed. Yeah, that was 180 degrees out. So there's some generic I don't even know what these are. Red Rider, Gabriel shocks, something. I just cleaned up and painted the original springs. They were in good shape. Um, sign of total sign of the times. Yeah, Red Rider replacement shocks. Those are some pretty cheap uh, parts store shocks for back in the day. Some more shots of the air cleaner, the 428 air cleaner. Again, I wasn't sure if I was going to keep this thing looking stock. With the stock air cleaner or you know kind of modified with those those dub the wheels and this nice oval air cleaner you can see i added the convertible um, bracing obviously it's not a convertible but it has the dimples in the sheet metal and i drilled it out for the convertible bracing 
bunch more picks of that uh, that air cleaner and the yellow Taylor wires. I had the proper Thunderbird wires with the numbers on them. If I wanted, you could go either way. Completely OEM stock look, or you know, a little little hot rodded if you wanted. That was just a decal package for a part store, like a Napa battery. Um, just some junk alternator. You know, some hoses. The factory hoses. I replaced all that stuff. Looks pretty nice. Had a really tall uh, K and N style. You know, rewashable, reusable air cleaner. Still had the plastic on it there. It was just testing fitment. The hood would shut. It was tight on that tall air filter element, but it would it would shut and, and seal up against it. Those wing nuts would dig into that brand new uh, hood insulation, but but it fit. All these next shots are. Uh, I kind of lost interest in the project and decided to let it go. I ended up selling it on eBay. A gentleman out of Ohio, and these are just some shots of. Uh, the U-ship guy that showed up at my house to pick it up, and yeah, he had a U-Haul trailer and a three-foot made in China come along, and he was older guy, had heart problems. I ended up loading that car myself in 90 degrees, and, you know, buyer beware of U-ship. Uh, you know, you get what you pay for. But I'd lost interest in the project, and it was time to, you know, pass it on. I think it was a, you know, in football terms, it was on first and goal, Ready to go, just need someone to carry it across the goal line. So here it is in uh, that gentleman's garage in Ohio. Him and his son kind of set up a makeshift paint booth and you know, here they are prepping it. Really it needed needed paint, it needed the alternator installed, the new starter. Again, I was 180 degrees out in the uh, the distributor and but uh, this thing it didn't need much. Some prep. You know, they did a nice, nice job for a, you know, DIY in, in garage. Um, you know, here's a bunch of primer. Um, they body worked it quite a bit. And I know that they did a lot of uh, wet sanding of the, uh, once the color went on there, on the clear, they, they did a lot of buffing and wet sanding to make it nice. So on the next shot, we'll, uh, we'll show some color going on. There it is, the ember glow, which is a beautiful color, kind of a burnt, brown orange really i mean the colors that you could get on cars back then just i mean so much so much more nice so much nicer and more distinctive than than cars of today you know everything is silver and black and dark gray but look at this this is uh really nice again just need someone to carry the project uh, over the goal line it uh, wasn't going to be me so turned out uh turned out really well. I did have a good time. I learned a lot. This was my first, you know, restoration project. First, you know, older car, classic car that I that I owned. I'll do it again. Um, yeah, you can see the, the buffing compound, the cutting compound there that they used. Um, look at that. You can, I hope you can tell from these picks the nice shine. He opted, of course, to go with a completely stock look. Oh, I had the uh, 1965 uh, hubcaps with the uh, little ember glow inserts that matched the paint you'll see here in the next picture of the uh, finished project. So there she is, beautiful car, beautiful car, every single option. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Again, I just took these pictures from my blog and you know turned them into a video and did this narration. And I hope uh, you've enjoyed the the journey with me. That was a you know a two year project that we've just condensed into a. Uh, 30 minute video but uh, look at that beautiful car 1966 Thunderbird town Landau turned into a 1966 never made special Landau edition as always uh, thank you for watching my friends take care